What is truth? Is there such thing as truth? Can we even know what is true? And where does truth come from? That's what we're going to dive in in today's Bible study lesson. What's up, Empower Christians? Glad to be back with you again. I pray the Lord is moving in your life and using you in big ways for the kingdom. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm happy you're here to learn and grow with us. I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries. In this video series, we're going through my entire book, The Empowered Christian Roadmap. You'll learn a lot from watching these videos alone, but I want to invite you to get the book and read along with each section. I also want to encourage you to download the free reading plan and get a couple of friends to join you going through it. Just click the links in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, please like it and consider subscribing and click the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. All right, guys, let's jump in. Today we begin uh, section two in chapter one, the opportunity and invitation. And we're going to begin today with subsection E, the necessity of truth. And the main point of this section is this, our love of truth, our desire for truth, our capacity for truth will determine our destination. In today's postmodern times, we often um, talk about truth in this very wishy-washy kind of way. Your truth, that's true for you, but not for me. That's your truth, not mine. Um, you, you have your truth and, and I have mine. This is postmodernism where truth is relative, where it's all related. It's, it's unique to each one of us. And this is part of the lie. The reality is that there are certain things that are just absolutely true. And God is the source of everything that is true. God is absolutely true. Like um, in the book, I talk about uh, um, a way of thinking about this is gravity, the, the gravitational force of the earth. The, the gravitational force is true. It's true whether we want it to be true or not. It's true whether we believe in it. It's true whether we it was true before we discovered it and gave a name to it and it is true even if we don't want it to be true it just is it's true god is the same way he is the reality whether we want to believe in him or not whether we acknowledge him or not whether we live for him or not whether we hate him or not it doesn't matter he just is it is the way that it is He's absolutely true. And this is, he even gave this to us in his name when he spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. He said, I am that I am. I will be who I will be. I just am. And we need to realize that since he is the source of everything else, he is the foundation and the beginning of everything else. So he is absolutely true regardless. And everything that is true proceeds from him. So as long as there's been humans, we've always struggled with certain things. And these things are the foundation of all philosophy and religion. We've looked for answers and explanations to origin. How did we get here? Morality. What is good? What is bad? What is right? What is wrong? How should we function? What should we do? How do we live as a society? Uh, meaning, what is the meaning of all of this? Where do we come from? Why do we exist at all? Why does anything exist at all? It, what is the purpose of it? What's the purpose of life? What's the purpose of each of us? And death, how do we avoid death if possible? Is there anything after death? What happens when we die? Where do we go when we die? These are the things that we look for. And we will continue to pursue these things whether, whether we discover absolute truth or not. If we, we can either continue 
to pursue looking for the absolute truth of these questions or we can create substitutes or have possible answers and just say that's good enough i'm just going to go with that right or that sounds good to me so i'm going to go with that even if it's not absolutely true but i believe and i and i walk through this systematically in this section that one there is absolute truth just like gravity there are things that are just true whether we want to believe in them or not uh, absolute truth is knowable by humans god has given us the ability to recognize what is true and to and the cognitive ability and reasoning ability to be able to search for it and to look for it and to evaluate options and to judge and discern what is true and also uh, spiritually he's given us the ability to do this and three god has provided a way for all of us to know truth and receive truth and so be saved by it and i believe the bible teaches all three of these things jesus said in john 18 37 uh, the second half of the verse for this reason, I was born and have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So Jesus acknowledges that that's why he came. And I, and I believe if we look at this, if we zoom out, we, we see a picture. We see God creating um, two different destinations. We have God, and then we have not God. Truth and untruth, or lies. And everything that leads to the truth, and everything that leads to the lie, and everything that leads to eternity with God, or heaven, and everything that leads to eternity apart from God, or hell. And everything that leads us to truth will move us in this direction and everything that is a lie will move us in this direction so this what we love and what we desire and what we pursue will send us in one of these two directions in romans 1 18 it says the wrath of god is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness for what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from His workmanship, so that men are without excuse. And in verse 25 it says, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is forever worthy of praise. Amen. So it is by following the lie that we start to, that's where the idolatry comes from. We begin to follow the lie. This goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, right? God gave them truth. Satan gave a lie. God said, if you eat from this tree, you will die. Satan said, no, you won't. You'll become like God. And ever since then, whenever we've followed truth which comes from god it leads us in that direction and whenever we follow a lie it leads us in that direction satan is called the father of lies in john 8 44. Uh, his other fallen angels are referred to as lying spirits in first john 4 1 galatians 2 4 2 peter 2 1. jesus even uh, referred to this about how for drawn to truth will be drawn to him he said in John 8, 42, If God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you are unable to accept my message. You belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out his desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. Get this. Refusing to uphold the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, because he is a liar and the father of lies. 
But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you can prove me guilty of sin? If I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So we, if, if you are being drawn to truth, you'll be drawn to God. If, you're, if you belong to God, you'll be drawn to truth. In the end times, prophesied in 2 Thessalonians 2.10, Paul says that with every wicked deception, right, every lie, directed against those who are perishing, because they refuse the love of the truth that would have saved them. They refuse the love of the truth that would have saved them. For this reason, God will send them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. They want to believe the lie, so God will send an even powerful, an even more powerful delusion so that they believe the lie. They've believed lies their whole lives, and they will to a greater extent in the end times. In order that all those not having believed the truth, but having delighted with in unrighteousness should be judged. John 14, 6, that Jesus is called the truth. In John uh, 1, 14, it says, His glory, the glory of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And in John 1, 17, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is numerously called the Spirit of Truth. We see in John 15, 26, 14, 17, and 16, 13. So in order to follow the path of truth, we need to go through Jesus, who is the truth. And we know from John 4, 24, that God is Spirit, and His worshipers must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, in, eight, in John 8, 31, to the, to the Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in 1 John 5.20, it says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. You see how much truth is, is central and core to everything. If you love truth, you will be drawn to truth. The truth will ultimately lead you to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will inherit eternal life through Him. If you hate truth, you will worship the lie, you will follow the lies of Satan. And so we need to always make sure that we're embracing truth, and that we love truth, and that we're pursuing it. And this means we need to remain humble, right? Because no one is born knowing all the truth and loving the truth already. This is an ongoing process. We need to be willing to, to continue to learn, to say, I'm, I'm open, I'm ready to learn. Let me hear different ideas and different beliefs and, and different practices, and let me evaluate them and keep seeking the Lord in, in, in all ways, right? If you never say, I, I changed my mind about that, it means you're stubbornly persisting in some lie, right? Because in order to grow, in order to continue to move in the right direction, we've got to give up false beliefs along the way. We have to. Which means we need to keep shedding things that are untruths that we've believed and bought into at some point. So we need to get rid of that stuff. Love the truth more than your own comfort. Love the truth more than your own unwillingness to change. Be willing to change. Be willing to grow continuously. And also, this needs to be um, applied whenever we're witnessing to others, right? You may be going on and on and on and on trying to witness to a certain person in your life 
who seems very hard-hearted and rebellious and does not seem to care what you are trying to say. You're pleading with them over and over. You need to trust in Jesus. You need to believe in him. He's true. And you have to, to come to terms and ask yourself the question, do they even care about what is true? Do they care? Maybe they don't care if it's true. They don't care if Jesus was the son of God who became a man and died for their sins on the cross. They don't care. They don't care if there's one God. They don't care if evolution is false. Maybe they would rather believe these things so that they can live for themselves. So you could, if you, if you have someone in, in your life where you encounter people like this in the future, you can ask them the question, if Christianity was true, would you follow Jesus? And if they don't say yes, then they don't care about truth and you should stop trying to persuade them that Christianity is true because they wouldn't follow Jesus even if it was. Move on to the next person who might be willing to follow Jesus because they do love truth. They're soil ready for the harvest. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you would subscribe. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in the series and consider inviting a few friends to go through the whole Bible study with you so that you can learn and grow in your discipleship together. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join us again soon. Have yourself an empowered week.